personal finance practice problem using OneNote. Stock split versus stock dividend. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. You're not required to, but if you have access to OneNote, would like to follow along. Icon left-hand side, practice problems tab in the 12270 stock split versus stock dividends tab. Also, take a look at the immersive reader tool. The practice problems typically in the text area too with the same name, same number, but with transcripts. Transcripts that can be translated into multiple languages, either listened to or read in them. We're thinking about investments in stocks, stocks representing an ownership interest in a corporation, corporations being separate legal entities whose ownership interest is broken out into standardized units or shares or stocks. We're also typically thinking about corporations that are publicly traded corporations, those trading on public exchanges, allowing more transparency and access to individual investors, two things such as the financial statements of the corporation on which we can make decisions. Also keep in mind, if you're using investment tools like mutual funds and ETFs, your strategy may be different than if you're investing in individual stocks. When investing in individual stocks, we might be drilling down to the trends and to the financial statements of the particular stock itself, as opposed to with mutual funds, we might be focusing more in towards sections of the market for example, we're thinking about individual stocks here and investment. What would be the impact if we had a stock split or a stock dividend? So these are two different things that can have an impact on our holdings, for example, for the investment. So let's look at it and we're going to try to consider it from the company side of things to understand what is happening, why it's happening and what's going to happen to our side of things on the investment. So first, let's just consider the balance sheet of a company. So we just put together a balance sheet here, uh, imagining that we are investing half some stocks of this company. So they've got the assets, they got the liabilities, they got the equity. We're focused down here on the equity type of uh, side of things. So the typical balance sheet, the assets represent what the company has, the liabilities represent the company owning something to third parties like a bank, the equity represents the ownership interest for the individuals. You can think about this a couple different ways. You might say one way to think about it from an accounting standpoint, typically the assets what the company owns and the liabilities and the equity represent the the who has claim to those assets either a third party 348,000 plus the uh, equity or the owners 987,000 and that gets us to the total here or we could think of it common from a finance kind of standpoint the net value of the company on a book basis would be the assets 1335000 minus the liabilities the 348000 and that would give us the equity kind of the ownership interest one way to kind of keep that straight in your mind is to think, well, if the company liquidated, they went out of business, for example, they went bankrupt, for example, they could sell all of their assets, they could pay off the liabilities, then in theory, they would have 987,000 left to pay off the owners, which are the shareholders, and they can pay off the shareholders in accordance to the, to the number of shares or the holdings, the standardized units of shares that are distributed and outstanding in uh, the market now i say in theory because in practice if they liquidated we don't know how much they're actually going to get for like the fixed assets because they're on the books at a depreciable amount depreciable cost oftentimes or even if they were on the books for a fair value amount we don't because buildings and stuff are like unique in nature we don't know how much you can actually sell them for so so that would be the general the general idea is that's kind of like the book value if they were to liquidate also note that that's not the actual value of the company when you consider future earnings potential because hopefully they're using those net assets to generate revenue that's why the stock price is going to be higher than on a per share basis than the the just the liquidation of the asset price for example so what happens if there's a, a two for one stock split so let's say there is a stock split if i look if i concentrate on the equity section down here we're going to say that there's common stock outstanding of the 100,000 shares. That's how many shares are outstanding. One person might own multiple shares, but there's 100,000 shares out there, standardized units of ownership. We have a par value of $2. The par value does not represent market value or the amount that the stocks were sold for. It's just a standardized unit 
so that if I was to see, for example, this 200,000, I can back into the number of shares that are outstanding, 200,000 divided by two would give us the 100,000 shares, for example. And uh, because if we use the actual value that they issued them for, meaning uh, usually this amount represents kind of the investment of owners in the company, meaning they issued shares and they got money for them. If we just issue it for the amount of money they got, then uh, then it's not going to have a nice even $2 par value because they're going to issue them for however much money they could get, which is not going to be the same all the way through. So sometimes, oftentimes you see this par value and then you see the capital in excess of par. That's how much they sold or issued the stocks over and above the par value. So these two numbers on a balance sheet represent kind of like the owner investment in the company. And that happens in a corporation with the corporation issuing stocks, the initial public offering, not the secondary market where most stocks are traded. We usually buy from the secondary market. These are issued from the company themselves. They received most likely cash and they then increased the, 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 these amounts, the, the par value and the capital in excess of par. So these are kind of like the investment. The retained earnings represents the earnings of the company. The company has generated earnings rolling through the income statement, and then they roll into the balance sheet that they have not yet distributed or given back to the owners in the form of dividends because possibly they're keeping them, they're holding on to them to buy more fixed assets, for example, which hopefully will increase the value of the company, hopefully allowing for future revenue generation, which means the, it should be reflected in the stock price, hopefully. But that's the retained earnings. And then here's the total equity. Now, what happens in a split? If we own the stocks, there's a couple things that we're going to be concerned about with the split. Uh, we're going to be concerned about, well, how many stocks am I going to have after the split happens? Uh, and what's going to happen to my like percent ownership value after the stock split happens? From the corporation side of things, they might do a stock split when they're trying to possibly lower the stock price. Now, the stock price is fairly low right now, but if they were trying to lower the stock price, they might do a stock split. Why would they want to lower the stock price? Maybe if this was higher than what people could typically purchase for uh, and they want to lower it, just they think that might increase the value in the stock just because the stock happens to be in, in a more price range that people like to buy at. That might be one reason they want to do a stock split. So that shouldn't, in theory, have any impact really on us on the holdings side of things in theory, right? So what would happen on the company side of things is basically the capital amounts here would go up in shares from 100,000 to 200,000, but the par value would generally be cut in half. So notice there's no net impact to this par value of the 200,000. So it's just kind of, and then down here, the capital in excess of par is still going to be the 100,000. So notice they didn't issue new stocks. There's no increase in the cash. There's no increase in the liabilities. They just basically adjusted the number of shares, doubling the number of shares, but cutting the par value in half. So no, no change really on the totals of the balance sheet. Now, this doesn't have any direct impact on the stock price because the stock price is driven by supply and demand. But you would expect that if you had two 100,000 shares a day ago and now they just issued and announced a stock split to have 200,000 the stock price the market would reflect that and have the price meaning the stock price would most likely go from $12 down to $6 because the market would be would have that information would take that into consideration now again you could get an increase in the stock price because if they like the stock split if the market thinks that the price is more more reasonable where the split happened and the split is typically often a good indicating sign it could it could increase the price relative you know more than six or something like that but you would expect in theory that that the stock price would then would then go uh go go to having the stock price so there would be no impact to us then if we owned say if we own like 200 shares of this particular company then we would say 200 times two we would now have 400 shares but the 400 shares we would expect not to be worth 12 dollars but would now be worth six dollars so if i had 200 th shares before times 12 dollars i had a value of 2400 and now i've got 400 shares times six dollars 
which would be valued at the same 200, 400. In theory, no change in my holdings. Although when I sell the stock, I have a bit more complexity I have to deal with because now I've got a, a situation where when I bought the stocks, I bought them at the full price and now I've got twice as many stocks. It should be half of that. So I got to calculate the gain on that, which could be a little bit confusing. Hopefully your broker can help you deal with those stock splits. But that's that's the general idea. Now, the other thing you could be concerned with as an investor is to say, what if I have a significant impact on the the workings of the company because I own a lot of shares, meaning most of us don't. So if I own like five shares out of 100,000 shares outstanding, then I've got a pretty low percent ownership. So it's not like I'm really impacting the decision making process or I have a, a big sway on the board of directors, for example. But if I did, if I had like 100,000 times 10%, if I had 10,000 shares before, then I might want that that's gonna be a 10% interest. That's a pretty significant chunk of ownership, which means I have a lot of influence on who's gonna be elected for the board of directors and stuff, for example. So if I was significant, then I could say, well, what would happen if I multiply this times two times two, then I'd have 20,000 and there would be 200,000 shares outstanding divided by 200,000. I should be at that same 10%, right? So I shouldn't have any real impact there either. Now, we also then have the stock dividend situation. So a stock dividend situation means that they're actually giving you value in the form of a dividend. A dividend represents a distribution out of the retained earnings. Normally, that's and the retained earnings represents the income of the company that has accumulated over time that they're going to now give out in a dividend that's similar to a draw for a partnership or sole proprietorship but the dividend has to be even for all owners usually the dividend is a cash dividend so it comes out of cash that would be a decrease to the retained earnings decrease of the cash we on the investment side would get the cash but now they're gonna to try to give a dividend of value, giving something other than cash, giving you stocks. So let's say they gave a 10% dividend. So if we, if we kind of consider what happens, we're not gonna have any change once again to the assets or the liabilities, but there's gonna be a little bit different of a change in the equity. The thing we need to consider is the retained earnings. It's gonna be coming out of then the retained earnings here. So this will get a little bit technical on it, but the general idea, we have the same concerns on our side, what's going to be happening, what value are we getting, and what's going to happen to our percent ownership shares, for example, on the company side of things, they're going to say, okay, we have in retained earnings, the 687,000, we're going to give out a dividend, which we think is currently valued at $12. We know what it's valued at because that's what it's currently trading for. So before we issued the dividend, we had 100,000 shares. So 100,000, we're gonna give a dividend times 0.1. So that's gonna be another 10,000 shares that are gonna be issued. And we think they're valued according to the market at 12% times 12. That's gonna be 120 that of value that's gonna come out of retained earnings. So I'm gonna subtract minus the retained earnings, the 687,000. So it's coming out of that retained earnings. That's where we get to uh, the retained earnings here. And then we're basically allocating the other side to the equity side of things, adjusting the number of shares up to 110 now, because that's how many shares are outstanding. We still have the $2 par value because we're not going to change the $2 par and that's going to give us the 220. And the difference then is going to go into the, the capital in excess of par. So I'll, I'll explain that a little bit more in detail, but the bottom line is that now retained earnings is impacted because we actually received value as opposed to up here we didn't get a distribution from retained earnings so we kind of have a form of income generally in terms of dividends that we received not in terms of cash but with the stock dividend on our side on the investment side of things here we shouldn't have any change to our percent ownership generally as well because say we had 200 shares before if I got a 10% dividend times 1.1, 110%, we would be at 220 uh, after, after the dividend had been distributed. So if I had 200 shares before divided by 100,000, we would now, we would have the 0 0.002. If I had 200 times 1.1, that would be 220 divided by now I'm going to have uh, uh, 110 shares divided by 110 shares. That's going to be the same 
percent. So again, we're probably for small investors, we might not be so worried about our voting capacity because it's kind of like voting in a republic as an individual. It's quite small, but if we had a, a significant uh, influence in the voting, then that's going to be more important to us. Let's calculate that in a little bit more detail. The new number of shares, we're going to say starting shares are 100,000. We're going to have a 10% dividend. That means 100,000 times 10%, 10,000 new shares issued. So now we're going to have shares at 110,000. The new total common stock then is going to be the 100,000 plus the 110. That's going to give us our 110,000 right there. The new common stock then We've got the new common, the new total common stock is the 110. The par value is just a generic number. So it's not, it's not what we sold them for. It's not the value. It's not the market price. It's a generic number that's going to stay constant. That's the point, $2 unless we have a split. And that's going to be 220. So that means the 110 shares times the par value is 220. So the new capital in excess of par then is going to be the stock price of $12 that we're issuing them for because that's the market price minus the par value, which is eaten up. That's that generic number of $2 gives us a difference of $10 times the 100, the 10,000 new shares. So there's an increase in the capital in excess of par of the 100,000. That means the difference here is going to be changed from the capital in excess of par. And if we add that to the original balance, now the capital in excess of par is 200,000. The retained earnings then was at the 687. That represents the earnings of the corporation that have not been yet distributed, which are some of them are being distributed now, which is gonna be the 10,000 new shares times the value of the new shares, $12. So we got then $120,000 worth, not dollars, but value dollars measured worth of value of shares in theory. So the retained earnings was at the 687. It's gonna go down by that value that we received, not in cash, but in shares of 120 to get to the 567,000. And there's the 567,000 uh, there.